Good evening. What an honor it is to be here and to have shared this powerful and moving experience with you. 23 years ago, one of my daughters, who was five at the time, came up to me one day and she said, so many kids are being killed with guns. Fix it, mommy. You know, I soothed my daughter, of course, and I honestly, I wanted to leave it at that, but I, I couldn't. The look in her eyes, the fear in her voice, I, I just couldn't let it go. So I started reading about gun violence, and I read and I read, I read every study I could find. And what I learned then is true today. Gun violence is preventable. And what is equally true is that we can prevent gun violence in ways that are respectful to gun owners. That was important to me. I grew up in a gun-owning, actually gun-loving family. In my family, when guns became too old to shoot, they were mounted and framed and called fine art. But I think what has frustrated me the most over all of these years is that it doesn't have to be like this. We don't have to tolerate this level of gun violence. There's nothing normal about it. No other high-income country in the world tolerates this level of gun violence. A study of the 23 high-income countries found that the firearm homicide rate in the United States is 25 times higher than the other 22 countries combined. And it's 49 times higher for our young people. It is unconscionable that we allow this to continue, especially since we know how to stop it. We know what to do. We have the evidence. We have the proof. We could make changes to our gun laws, changes like requiring background checks on all gun sales, which, according to a study from Johns Hopkins of a similar law, leads to a 40% decrease in the homicide rate, the firearm homicide rate. So, and, and it's also important to know that this is a wildly popular policy. 85% of Wisconsinites, including gun owners and NRA members, support such a policy. In fact, background checks are more widely supported, more popular here in Wisconsin than beer or cheese or Aaron Rodgers. That's popular. And we had such a law introduced during this last session, but it didn't go anywhere. Why? Because keeping guns out of the hands of those most likely to do harm means selling slightly fewer guns, something that is intolerable to the gun lobby. And sadly, far too many of our legislators do exactly what the gun lobby to tell, tells them to do even when it's wrong, even when it's immoral. Our policies are being crafted not to save more lives, but to sell more guns. Our children have become collateral damage so that the gun industry can thrive. That's disgusting. And if we are not willing to accept a society that puts profits over people, then we must use our voices and our votes to create a society that is a reflection of the, our best selves, not our worst. We must rise up and raise our voices because lives depend on us doing so, the lives of our neighbors, our coworkers, our friends, our family, our children. We must rise up and raise our voices 
because an 11-year-old was gunned down on a bridge in Manasha. Another 11-year-old in a field in Sharon, a 10-year-old on a playground, a 5-year-old while sitting in her grandfather's lap, a 2-year-old by her own dad, a 1-year-old while he was playing with his toys. We will rise up and raise our voices because 20 little children and six hero educators went to school one day and never returned home. 23 years ago, my daughter asked me to make a commitment. And now I'm asking you, right here, right now, join me in a fight that we must win. A fight that I promise you we will win. Because if we look at the history of our country, we know with certainty that when good and moral and decent people join together, that which is wrong can be made right. Our own history teaches us that when we, when all of us, rise up and raise our voices relentlessly, with purpose, with urgency, with dogged determination, then we will win. And when we do, when we win, we will finally give our children, all of our children, a chance to live the American dream, a chance to sing the sweetest, purest, truest notes of our American song. Thank you.